Modern Continuous Manufacturing Processes for a Next Level of Productivity To know the modern continuous manufacturing process for the next level of productivity, keep watching. Number 4. How Pencils Are Made in a Factory A pencil is a writing or drawing tool made of a small, solid pigment core enclosed in a protective case that protects the core from breaking or leaving marks on the user's hand. The pencil's lead is made of finely chopped graphite and clay powders. Before mixing, the two ingredients are cleansed of foreign matter and dried in a way that produces huge square cakes. After the cakes have completely dried, the graphite and clay squares are combined with water. The amount of clay added to the graphite is determined by the desired pencil hardness, and the time spent grinding the combination defines the lead quality. After that, the mixture is formed into long spaghetti-like strings, straightened, dried, chopped, and tempered in a kiln. The resulting strings are soaked in oil or molten wax, which seeps into the material's small pores and enables the pencil to write smoothly. The clay threads are put into the grooves of a juniper or incense cedar board with multiple lengthy parallel grooves. Another groove plank is attached on top, and the entire structure is sliced into individual pencils before being polished or painted. Once it moves to the painting process, the wood is dipped into the required color to give it a perfect look. After that, once the pencils are dried and polished, they move forward to the packaging section, where different piles of pencils are packed in a box. Number 3. Tennis Ball's Manufacturing Process A tennis ball needs far more than braided wool felt. A tennis ball necessitates precise specifications and plenty of adhesives and heat. The rubber compound is made in three days, and then steel rollers knead and thin it before machinery heat and cut it into portions. After that, the slugs are shaped into half shells. The first of three curing stages hardens the slugs into half shells, which Dylan refers to as the ground rules for manufacturing a tennis ball. Under 160 kilograms pressure, the molds reach 316 degrees Fahrenheit in 90 seconds. The half-shell seams are rubbed with a fine 80 to 120 grit sandpaper to prepare them for shaping into a solid core. The seam is additionally treated with adhesive. The half-shells are loaded into molds and pressed together to form a core. At this point, 18 pounds per square inch pressurized air enters the chamber. The compressed air is trapped and the glue is cured over an eight-minute procedure that warms and cools the core. When 120 cores are dropped into a drum at a time, the sidewalls function as sandpaper, and a 36-grit sandpaper disc at the drum's bottom rotates and agitates the cores. The drum process roughens the surface, allowing the adhesive to adhere strongly to the core. Then, an automated cutting machine cuts felt sheets 8 feet wide and 230 feet long into panels, initially termed dog bones, due to their form. After stacking, the felt is dipped in a yellow vat of glue, which helps it stick to the core while also acting as the seams. A specifically built ball covering machine adheres the two felt panels to the core with adhesive on the core and the back of the felt. The ball is heated for 11 minutes to cure the seam adhesive. And, of course, after all the logos and final touches comes the packaging. The balls are piled in a plastic bottle to make things look just right. Number 2. Vacuum Forming Technology one of the oldest and most used ways of processing plastic materials is thermoforming, often known as vacuum forming. 
Vacuum produced items may be found all around us and play an important role in our everyday lives. The procedure entails softening a plastic sheet and stretching it over a mold. A vacuum is used to pull the sheet into the mold. After that, the sheet is evacuated from the mold. In its evolved version, the vacuum forming process employs complex pneumatic, hydraulic, and thermal controls, allowing for greater production rates and more detailed vacuum form products. The plastic must be allowed to cool once it has been made before it can be released. If the component is released too soon, the molding will distort, resulting in a rejected part. Fans are installed and started after the component is manufactured to accelerate the cooling cycle. A spray mist alternative is also available, which involves attaching nozzles to the fans and directing a thin mist of cold water over the sheet. In combination with the fans, this can accelerate the cooling cycle by up to 30%. Mold temperature control systems are also available to provide precise and consistent cooling durations when chilling crystalline and crystallizing polymers. Number 1. Produce thermoplastic with modern machines Amut has a strong reputation among manufacturers of thermoplastic material extrusion facilities and is a point of reference for everyone in the industry. Amut provides extrusion, package thermoforming, and a plastic recycling factory. Amut goes beyond the limits of mass production with a range of more than 80 extruder models accessible, delivering extruders built to meet any application and tailored according to production needs to achieve great performance at low pricing. The firm always works out and covers the design, research, and development of the fundamental parts such as drive gears, extrusion screws, and barrels. Amut has created a new compact extrusion die and an extruder to manufacture polyethylene pipes in large facilities. This is an extrusion line for manufacturing PE100 pipes with large dimensions a maximum exterior diameter of 1,000 millimeters and an hourly output of 1,200 kilograms. They created a small extrusion die with a 16 spiral distribution for this project, ensuring precise thickness uniformity over the whole pipe circle. The die is paired with an extruder EA130 horsepower high torque extruder with a barrel capacity of 40 LD. This machine has a 400 kilowatt motor, a high thermal exchange feeding bush, and a plasticizing unit with a 40 diameter. It can produce up to 1500 kilograms per hour of 1000 millimeter pipes. The extruder is built with a bimetallic barrel and a wear resistant coated screw. So, which amazed you the most? Comment below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit the like, share, and subscribe button. Thanks for watching.